So anytime you're connecting up a disk into a Windows server, you've got a couple of different decisions that you have to make about how you want that disk to be formatted and how you ultimately want to use it in operations. The first of which is what kind of partitioning format that you want to use. On one hand, you have the, the old school way, which is involved with the MBR approach or, or master boot record approach. And on the other hand, you have the newer approach, which is a, the GUID partition table or a GPT disk. Now, it's worth mentioning that neither of these is particularly better than the other for any reason other than storage space. But you do have to decide well, which version of this partitioning that, do you really want to implement on the disk when you pull it into production. On the left-hand side, we have the MBR approach, which uses a partition table in the first sector of the disk to describe what kinds of partitions are on that disk and where they're actually at. And, and I do mean where as in where on the physical platters the, the partitions begin and end. Now that partition table being in the first sector of the disk is nice, but uh, it can occasionally have problems if you end up with corruption in that first sector of the disk. Now that's why the newer version, the, the GUID partition table approach, uses EFI to store partition information in multiple different locations. So you have some redundancy there that uh, can protect you against corruption, causing an inability to access the data on the disk. Now these days, we tend to use other technologies like RAID and other things in order to protect ourselves from a single disk causing the loss of all the data on that disk. And so the fact that the partition table is redundant using GPT is awesome, but it's simply another tool that you can add into your long list of those to protect yourself against data loss. Now, the biggest differences here between MBR and GPT has to do with how much storage space either of these can provide. MBR supports disks up to two terabytes, and GPT can support disks up to and larger than two terabytes. The, the actual size is significantly larger than two terabytes. The other thing is, is that MBR disks are limited to four primary partitions, or three primary partitions, plus one extended partition that can be chopped up in various ways. This is not the case with GPT disks, where you can essentially have a virtually unlimited number of partitions on a GPT disk. Now, it's obviously not unlimited, but there's a very large number that's probably larger than you'll ever use. Now, the problem, however, with GPTs, as you can see in the lower right, is that not all previous Windows versions can recognize GPT disks. Most of the ones that you're using today in production can. And so a GPT disk is generally kind of a good idea, except if you have some application or server region to do MBR-based disks. So let's actually talk about how we can implement both MBR and GPT disks here on our server file one. Now, this is a server file one that I've already named. I've put it here into our Active Directory domain here in company.pri. And uh, as you see down here under File and Storage Services, if I take a look at the disks here, I've already added in four different disks that we could use here on the server. I want to go ahead and add in a fifth disk here, and I want to do so within VMware Workstation so that you can take a look at the process within VMware Workstation that I've gone through just to add in these terabyte disks. Now here in the list of the, the virtual machine settings for this VM, so now I'm kind of stepping out of my lab environment, kind of breaking the fourth wall, if you will, and then taking a look at the virtual machine configuration itself. On this virtual machine, I have my original hard disk that I created, and on that disk is the C drive, and I have these additional four terabyte disks that I've added as well. These are all SCSI disks. Now for each of these disks, I've configured it as a single terabyte, and if I want to add an additional disk, all I have to do is go here to hard disk as SCSI, and then configure that as a new virtual disk of size 1024, and then store that virtual disk as a single file. The good part about these disks, and really the good part about using VMware Workstation for this lab that we're working with here, is the fact that when I'm using VMware Workstation, the disks that I'm creating needn't necessarily consume the actual terabyte that I'm actually configuring for them. This thin provisioning really makes it worthwhile for me to create as many disks as I need. Now, anytime I plug in an additional disk, either physically into a server or logically, as we just did here within VMware Workstation, I've got to go through here under Tasks to actually rescan the storage. This process of rescanning is what allows me to hot add in the storage to a running machine. And as you can see here, after a second or so, the fifth disk is now added in here as an available one that can be used by Server Manager in creating another volume or connecting these disks together for one reason or another. 
Let me start the process here, however, not in Server Manager. I want to bring up the old school Disk Management Console here because I think at least for some of the more basic things that you'll be doing, it's almost easier to visualize the disks outside of Server Manager than is it with the old disk management tool, at least, or maybe I'm just showing my age here in terms of using these tools. I do want to show you that here under disk management, we have these nice little bar graphs that show us, well, we have our original disk zero, that is a basic disk, on which we've installed the operating system. This is the C drive. And we have that additional system reserved partition that the installation of the OS automatically added for us that's not directly addressable necessarily, but it does include some various things that can be used to recover the C drive if, if I need to. In addition to that are these new five disks, one, two, three, four, and five, that I've added in here, these terabyte disks. Now, anytime I add a new disk in, I've, I've hot added these disks in with the machine running, there are a couple of steps that we have to go through in order to bring the disks online and prepare them for actual use. The first of which is to bring the disk literally online. That happens here by right-clicking and choosing to bring the disk online. Now, that doesn't really gain us much. If the disk were prepared and we were using it, the offline online approach would allow me to remove that disk from being accessed. But here, all it does is allow us to then take the next step, which is to initialize the disk. This disk initialization activity is where we can then choose which of the partition styles or approaches that we're interested in, the MBR approach or the GPT approach. For this first disk, let's go ahead and choose that as a GPT disk. And as you'll see here, it'll initialize very quickly this disk as a GPT disk. For the second one, let's go through the same process here of bringing it online and initializing it as an MBR disk. Now I'm showing you this because as you can see here, well, there's not much difference here in terms of what these two disks look like. But if I go to my properties here, I can see that, um, and in fact, I'm not sure where this is here, uh, is the partition style information here under the volumes tab. Now I'm showing you this for a couple of different reasons, not the least of which is, I wanna show you that there is some command line exposure here that you can use to accomplish some of these tasks, actually quite a few of these tasks really. And that command line exposure happens through this tool called disk part. Now this is the old style command line tool for managing your disks. And odds are good that there may be a question or two on the exam about the disk part utility because it's been around for a long time and people still really use it today. In the disk part utility, we have a variety of different commands that we can use, the list of which is here. I would understand, I would know for the exam, the entire list that you see here, and at least at a general level, recognize what each of the possible different verbs here could accomplish. So for example, uh, to attach a virtual disk file, uh, to, uh, to compact a disk, I would be, I would be aware of that, uh, to convert between different formats, to create a volume partition or virtual disk. Any of these are pretty good candidates for being potentially on that exam that you may be taking. Now, for example, I just wanna show you some of the ways in which disk part can actually work. Um, one of the commands here is the list command, which if I type in list, I can then choose which of the different things I want to list, which may be, for example, the disks. So list disk here gives me the five or really six different disks that are currently connected onto this machine, the five terabyte disks and then the one 200 gig disk. And if I take a look at disk one, I can say list uh, disk one, I can find out more information uh, or excuse me, not list disk one, I can select disk one to actually attach to the disk that I'm interested in, in making a change to. So let's go ahead and use this select disk one command to go ahead and attach to the disk that we may perhaps want to perform some activity on. I can use the detail command, detail, to find out more information about the disk. So detail disk, for example. This is the disk at target one. Uh, it is uh, not in a currently read-only state. It is not a boot disk. It is not a page file. And it's currently online. It is of type SAS. So just a second ago, we actually created a couple of different disks, one of which was an MBR-based disk, and the other of which is, was a GPT-based disk. So let's go and actually use this disk part command to go about converting the MBR-based disk over to GPT. This is something that in that direction, going from MBR to GPT, can be done online with data on the disk. It's much, much harder to go in the other direction from GPT to MBR. It involves a lot of removal of information and clearing of the disk first. So the problem, however, is I need to select the other disk because this current disk is the one that's already at GPT. I can do so by choosing select disk two now. With that done, I can use the convert command 
to convert the disk to GPT. As you can see here, the process is very easy, very simple process. But again, much, much harder to go in the other direction after the disk has been brought up and into production use. But this gives you an idea of the couple of different ways in which you can configure the disk in the partitioning format that you'll use for any disk you may bring online.